Hey guys, Sam here with Studio Sweat On Demand. Today I've got a quick 20 to 25 minute upper body workout using the TRX apparatus. So the level of the TRX today is going to be all the way up at the highest position. So to set that up, you're gonna hold down on the clip and just pull your tabs up as high as you can. The lower part of the cradles should land somewhere below your hip bone in between like your hip and your knee. That's all you need to do to set up. So just go ahead and get that set and we'll get started. Get even more Studio Sweat On Demand with our seven-day free trial. We've got a huge library of live and on-demand workout videos, all filmed in our studio and featuring real people just like you. Download our app today. All right, so the first exercise is called a W. We're going to walk out so that you have tension on your TRX. Start with your palms facing down. You want your feet slightly in front of your shoulders. So you're lean back just a bit. From here, we're going to bend those elbows, squeeze the shoulder blades together, and then lengthen the arms back out. You're breathing out as you squeeze those shoulder blades, and then slowly back together. We're going to go for about eight reps here. And if you want more intensity, you can always walk your feet closer to that anchor point. Now, whenever you're holding these handles, try to let them rest in the bottom of your fingers rather than squeezing the whole palm onto the handles. The reason for that is because when you're squeezing too hard, that really can overactivate your forearms and your wrists. And we want to keep all the tension here in the triceps. So you're using these handles just as much as you need to and try not to overuse or squeeze them too hard. This is the last repetition here. And then we're going to go ahead and come into a pull-up. So for this one, we're going to sit down onto the ground and you want your TRX slightly angled out away from your anchor point. So you're like maybe a foot away from where it's connected. Turn your palm slightly inward. And then for these pull-ups, you always want to think of pulling your shoulder blades down first and then pull your elbows down to the ground. Your chest is reaching up to the anchor point and control it down. I'm exaggerating, but you always want to go scapula first, then elbows. This will ensure that you're pulling from your back muscles because if you're trying to pull just from the elbows, there's a really good chance that your neck and your shoulder muscles will take over. They're typically a lot stronger and more dominant than your back muscles. So by thinking of which joint moves first, that's a really good way to make sure that we're moving from the right area. The slower you go down, the more work is happening. And we have two more here. And one more rep like that. Lengthen down nice and slow. And then go ahead and bring yourself back up and turn around face away from the anchor point. The next one is a tricep extension. So the further back your feet are, the more tension you have. I'm going to start kind of forward here since we're doing three sets. We'll warm it up and then engage all these core muscles to keep your body in one straight line. From here, you're gonna keep your elbows at the same height, just bend them and take those handles to the crown of your head and then push into those handles more with the pinky sides of your hands, just to make sure again that those shoulders are not rounding forward or taking over. Here we're going for about eight of everything. There's four. And again, just make sure that we're not allowing the hips to sink back or tuck too far forward. You're keeping everything in one straight line and your heels lifted up. Let's go two more there. Inhaling as you bend, exhaling as you push. And this is the last rep here and that was our third exercise. We'll go ahead and take it back into those W's for our second set. Every round, I encourage you to bring your feet a little bit closer to the anchor point to create more intensity. You're looking right up at where that TRX is connected. Inhale as you lean it back and then pull those handles apart on your exhale. Try to bring your elbows out to that 90 degree angle so that your handles here are stacked right over the elbows. Three. And just make sure that your whole trunk, your whole core area is staying contracted so that your body moves as one straight line. We're halfway there. Let's walk those feet a little further forward. Remember that you want to challenge yourself as much as you can. This should not be super easy for you. If it is, step those feet forward. Let's go two more there. All right, last one like that. And then we'll take it into our pull-up. So that first one was shoulders. This one's gonna be more back focused. Pull your shoulder blades down and then handles down towards your rib cage. Lengthen back out. And try not to use your legs to bring you up. So all the tensions in your back, sometimes we'll see the hips lift up first. You wanna keep those hips down low and make your upper body do as much work as you possibly can. All right, here's six. We've got two more there. 
All right, last one like that. Make sure you lower all the way down, that's half the work. And then come on up. Let's turn around, we'll go back into those tricep extensions. If you want more intensity for this one, you can separate your handles apart from each other. This is gonna be more stable. So if you want it a little bit more challenging, go ahead and bring them an inch or two apart from each other. Heels up high, abs and glutes engaged. Lean out as far as you can without the shoulders creeping up and then bend your elbows. And then push into the outsides of your hands. And do that again, keeping your head aligned with your shoulders. And then you wanna keep your elbows really narrow too. So rather than flaring out, you're trying to squeeze the elbows in towards each other. There's halfway, we have four more here. Six, let's go, two more reps. All right, last repetition here, and we'll go into our final set. Whew, all right, one more time. So we'll go back to those Ws. So a good starting point is elbows at the rib cage, lengthen the arms, and then if you need it more intense, just walk those feet forward a little more. Shoulder blades first, then elbows pull apart. Lengthen the arms and make sure that you have a soft bend in your knees so they're not fully locked out. The reason for that is because when you lock out the joints, it can create a lot more tension here in your lower back. You want to keep that micro bend so you're using the musculature of your legs and your core to support your position. There is four, let's go four more there. Last three, keeping a light grip on those handles. And two more. All right, here's our last one. Lengthen out to finish. And then let's go back into those pull-ups one more time. Have a seat. You can bring your legs any distance apart that feels right for you. Push into the outsides of your hands. You'll notice if you push into the inside, see how rounded my shoulders and back are? Just by pressing into the pinky fingers, that's gonna align your spine, keep your posture nice and tall. From there, we pull the shoulder blades down, then elbows, lengthen right back out. To make it more intense, try not to put any weight into your lower body. As you sit down, just kind of tap down and pull right back up. Right, there's five, let's go three more there. And last one here. Whew. All right, we'll go back into those triceps. One more exercise of this first block. Turn around, walk those feet back a little further each set. Anchor your shoulder blades, and then you're just bending at the elbows. Keep them at the same height, and press back forward. This is a lot of good core work here as well. You wanna keep that whole trunk area of your body, like your glutes and your abs engaged. There's halfway. All right, two more here, and we'll get three new moves. Here's the last one of these tricep extensions. Go ahead and let that rest, and we'll move on to our second block. For this next block, we'll start with our bicep curls. So we're facing towards the anchor point here. And then again, the closer your feet are towards the hand or towards the anchor point, the more intensity you have. Palms are facing up, draw those shoulder blades down, and then just bend your elbows. Try to bring those handles to your temples, and then lengthen the arms back out. We wanna make sure to avoid letting those shoulders lift up, keep them down away from your ears, and then try to keep a really light grip on the handles anytime that you're using this apparatus. You always have tension in those ropes, and we have four more. I like to think of the elbows squeezing together as your handles pull apart. I feel like, for me, that creates a lot more tension in the biceps, and it helps to prevent the shoulders from taking over. Let's go, two more. And last rep like that. All right, so there's our bicep curls. Next movement is gonna be an alternating chest press and chest fly. So we turn away from this anchor point. Chest press, your palms are facing down, your heels are lifted up, and you're just gonna bend your elbows to the shoulder line. See how they're at 45 degrees? Press back forward, rotate your palms in, and then open the arms for your chest fly. So you have one chest press, and then one chest fly. We're gonna do four reps of this to equal eight total. Make sure those elbows are never passing those shoulders. You wanna stop right at shoulder level. Squeeze your core as you push back up. 
And then for the chest fly, avoid bending your elbows. They stay in the same shape. So right here they bend. Right here they stay in that same shape. We have one more here. All right, last one with that chest fly. And then go ahead and let that rest. Okay, we have one more movement in this block. This one is gonna be a shoulder press. So this one, your body's actually not moving, just your arms are. So you're gonna come to this 90 degree angle or somewhere towards 90, like a goal post. And then the closer your feet are to the anchor point, the more intensity you have. We're just gonna lift those arms straight up and then bend your elbows back down. This one doesn't look like a whole lot is happening, but it's actually super, super challenging, especially if you increase that angle. All right, we have four more here. All right, two more like that. Try not to move your body at all. It's super tough to do. And that's your last one for that shoulder press. You can always take this stretch afterwards. This feels really nice to just kind of rest things out, stretch it out, take a quick break before the next set. And then we'll reset for our bicep curls. So second set, walk your feet a little closer towards the anchor point to create more intensity. Palms up, shoulder blades down. And then take your whole body with you as you bend your elbows, pulling the handles apart. Make sure that your arms lengthen all the way. As you straighten them, go to that full extension here. Always make sure to keep your head in line with your spine. Four, we'll go four more there. Last three. Always keeping that soft bend into the knees and breathing out through the mouth as you pull in, in through the nose as you lengthen. And let's do that one more time. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and turn around. We'll go into that alternating chest press to chest fly. So when you're facing away from your anchor point, the closer your feet are towards the wall behind you, the more intensity you have. We wanna make sure those handles are about rib cage or belly button height. Make sure they're not too high here. We're gonna bend those elbows just to about where the shoulders are. Press back together and then switch. Palms face each other. Squeeze the chest muscles to push back to that start position. That's one rep, we have four of them. So one press and one fly equals one rep. There's three, we've got one more like that. This is a really good way to train for push-ups as doing it with your whole body weight can be really intense. So this is a great way to provide some assistance there. And then we have one more movement of this block. Last one is that shoulder press. So this is the one where your body stays still, just the arms are moving. We're just gonna reach those arms straight up, keep tension on the TRX straps and pull right back down. Think of squeezing your shoulder blades together as you pull down and keeping a really light grip on these handles. And the further you lean back, the more tension you're creating there. We have four more there. Two more like that. And this is our last one. All right, we'll go through one more set here. So let's go back to those bicep curls. Third set, I really want you to push that range of motion. Go to a point where you're not sure if you can do all eight reps. And if you need to walk those feet back, that's good. You want to challenge yourself to the point of failure because that's how we get stronger. Let's head back into those bicep curls. Shoulder blades down, bend your elbows and pull the handles apart. Lengthen out nice and slow. You're looking up towards the anchor point, keeping a little bend in the knees. And remember, the slower that you go and the longer that you hold that tension, the more intensity you're creating. We have four more here. All right, last two. Just make sure those knees aren't starting to lock out. And last one here. Lengthen all the way to finish. And we'll take it back to that chest movement. Last set here, walking the feet even closer to that wall behind you. Push into those pinky sides of your hands and then bend your elbows about 45 degrees. Press back together and switch to that chest fly. Now, if you start to feel this in your neck and your shoulders, that's not really working the chest. So we want to lower those arms down more. Sometimes they're a little bit too high. 
So just check the angles and check which muscles you feel working here. Your positioning depends on a lot of factors, such as the width of your shoulders, the length of your arms, and we all have really different bodies. So just listen to what you're feeling in your body, and if you're not feeling the chest, try to bring those handles down a little bit lower. Whew, there's the fourth one. We're gonna go for one more set of that shoulder press. Let's increase that tension. Walk the feet a little further forward than you want to. Set those shoulders at, or those elbows at 90 degrees, and then press straight up. Bend your elbows and squeeze those shoulder blades together. Try to avoid popping the ribs open or contracting your core, like you have a corset on to do that. All right, there's four. Let's increase that tension a little more. We have four more to go. Last few reps should not be easy. Two more reps like that. All right, last one here. And we are done with that second block. Let's take a quick rest. Just kind of relax the upper body here. Swing side to side. Feels nice on the lower back. That's a good stretch here as well. And let's go ahead and roll it on up. Now for this last block, we're going to take our TRX into single arm mode, single hand mode. So to do that, you're going to take one of the handles and just place it on top of the other one and slide it through. Then you're gonna do that exact same thing again with the opposite handle, slide it through. And then once you've done that twice, you're gonna hold on to the lower cradle, which will be the second one that you slid through. And that's just gonna bring this into a single arm mode so we can don't have to hold on to both handles because it's a little bit too big for one hand. So this one is a single arm row. You're gonna start with your elbow at the rib cage, standing about upright. And if you want more tension, you can always walk the feet further forward. From here, you're gonna softly bend the knees, keep everything tight, just lengthen the arm as much as you can pull your shoulder blade back first bend the elbow and try to drive it down to the rib cage this is a lot of core work also because anything that's single arm or single leg requires you to use your core to not rotate we call that an anti-rotation challenge so by working single arm we're also working a lot of core here Four, we're gonna go for two more here we're doing six per side all right, last one there, and then just go ahead and switch those arms. You can recenter yourself if you feel like you need to, starting pretty much upright with the elbow at or in front of the rib cage, and then look up towards your anchor point, lengthen the arm. Always slide that shoulder blade back and then the elbow just to ensure that we're initiating from the back muscles rather than your front delts or your traps, which are the front of your shoulders and your neck muscles. They're typically a lot stronger than your back muscles and they want to take over, so that scapula back first is really important. There's three, we'll go for three more. Again, always keeping a light grip on that handle, so you're just kind of letting it rest in your fingers as much as you can. All right, let's go for one more there. And then the last one is facing away from the anchor point. This is a core exercise just to kind of mix things up a little bit. It's also working those same back muscles, but just a little bit more core focused. So you have both hands in one cradle, push into the pinky fingers, lift the heels up, walk your feet back a little bit. From here, you're just gonna reach those handles up and shift your whole shape forward. Press into those handles, use your abs and your back to pull those handles back to about chest height. We inhale as you reach forward and then exhale, pull down. Now you can also hold on to the, the uh, straps of the TRX here. That can give you a little bit more range of motion because you can pull down lower. Four, we're going for six reps here in this last block. We've got two more there. The bigger range of motion, the more work is happening. And last one like that. So lots of back in this block. We're gonna do it two more times. Let's start on the opposite side. I always like to mix up which side I start on just so that we're not always fatiguing the same side first. And since they're both involved in that third exercise, it's always a good idea to, a good idea to kind of change it up. I'm gonna step a little closer to the anchor point for more tension. Soften the knees, lengthen the arm, and shift your whole shape back. Scapula, then elbow, and then the slower that you lengthen the arm, the more tension you're creating here, the more we are working that back. Try to pull that elbow down and back as far as you can. And then I always like to turn the opposite palm forward, just because when you turn it back, it can cause the neck and the shoulders to round forward. So we want to focus on that posture, always staying open. I think that was four, we'll do two more there. And last one like this. And then just switch sides. Try to keep your feet planted in the same spot unless your right and left sides feel super different. Know that it might and you can always adjust your uh, positioning if you feel like one side is much more challenging. Set that position, inhale, lengthen the arm, exhale, pull your elbow down and back. 
and then keep the ribs square, hips square. It's actually a lot of core work here on that same side as your working arm or your working back muscles here. Notice how the hips kind of want to rotate. We're using all these muscles to stay centered. We've got three more there. And last two. Last one here. Make sure to lengthen the arm all the way to finish it. I always cheat on that. And then let's go ahead and turn it around. We'll go back into that rollout. I'm going to hold on to the lower cradle this time just for a different wrist position. Try them all out and see what your body likes the most. Feet back, tuck the hips forward, and then inhale, go as far as you can, maybe a little bit further than you think you should, and then pull those handles down, contracting your abs and your back. Two, let's inhale as we reach forward, and then exhale as you pull down. Keep the heels nice and high. Make sure that as you pull down, those heels are not dropping. That's going to take away a lot of the tension from the muscles that we're trying to focus on. Yep, two more. And last one like that. All right. So that completes the upper body work portion. Make sure to check out the lower body variation. We've got a 30 minute TRX lower body and core workout, as well as many other workouts on Studio Sweat on demand. Thanks for joining us.